So we have this fight scene which is hilariously choreographed and leads to some pretty awesome moments like this. Freeze you mother Leave him alone. Uncuff him. I'm in. Uncuff him. So Yamashita finally takes out a gun and starts shooting everywhere. And this guy for some reason just stands there and gets shot. Then this guy acts like he's getting shot even though clearly nothing is hitting him at all. And it's pretty much the same with this guy too. So after a while of spraying bullets everywhere, Yamashita throws a grenade and leaves while Samurai Cop and Frank crack some terrible jokes. Hey, look what they've done to my car. Captain Roman's gonna burn my ass. Yeah, he's gonna burn it. Charcoal black. <laughs> it is black. Right on. <laughs> really? You just witnessed a triple homicide, not to mention attempted murder on you, and you guys are just totally cool with it. This seems like an appropriate time for racial jokes to you. Like, no wonder the captain seems so stressed out. His police force is pretty incompetent. So I guess this is the next day, and Samurai Cop goes back to the restaurant, you know, where the war zone broke out. But instead of talking to the owner about the firefight that took place in the parking lot, he tries to get her to go out with him. This is amazing police work right here. You might think I'd have some questions for you about the criminal gang I'm investigating that you happen to be friends with, but no, I'm just going to try and get you to go out on a date with me. And I have no idea what in the hell this thing is or why they included it in the movie, but it's actually more interesting than the actual dialogue. I mean, I mean, why would she have this? Where would you find something like this? It's some kind of lion head made out of yarn. It, it almost reminds me of some kind of elementary school arts and craft project. And it's so prominent in the shots too. It's almost impossible to not be distracted by this thing. Even after he leaves, the camera pans over and the lion head thing gets more frame real estate than her. Anyways, as Samurai Cop is leaving, he's ambushed by once again random thugs from the Japanese gang. Wow, that looks pretty intimidating, doesn't it? So after he beats them all up, one of the guys gets up and we have this chase scene through the neighborhood, which is absolutely hilarious, especially since it ends when the guy just kind of trips accidentally on purpose. You know, I bet they cast him in this movie solely because he has a dragon tattoo and they probably thought, well, that looks cool. Make sure we get a shot of that. I swear, I don't know. Don't lie to me or I'll break your fucking wrist. Now tell me. Assaulting a police officer with a deadly weapon will get you 15 years. But if you tell me who hired you, I'll get him. You'll get what? The 15 years? The guys that hired him? I, I really don't see how that's sweetening the deal for him there, Samurai. Yeah, assaulting a cop will get you 15 years, but if you talk, I'll get the bad guys. Don't see how that really helps him out with the whole 15 years in prison situation. So they go to Akamura's house with the plan of arresting him, and this is hilarious because the one cop asks if it's the right house, and Samurai starts answering, but he's facing the opposite direction. So he's actually talking out loud towards the house they're supposed to be sneaking up on. And I'm just going to assume it was really hot on the day they were shooting this because Frank is pretty much melting away before our very eyes. So inside the house, more Japanese gang members are sitting around with their shotguns while playing cards, smoking, eating donuts, and drinking lemonade. I don't know, I've never been in a criminal gang before, but is this typical behavior? That would be surprising to me. This frame by itself just says so much about this movie. I mean, I've never seen a film try so hard to not make sense. I almost want to print this off and hang it somewhere in my home. That way whenever I have a party or I'll, you know, I have people over, I'll tell them to look at it and everybody can guess at what exactly is going on here. I think this is now an easy entry to the Fanboy Flicks Facebook page caption game because, you know what, I haven't done that. I haven't done that in a long time. I, I usually do it after every video, so Get your captions ready, because this is going up on the Facebook page as soon as this video goes up. So now we have Akamura in his underwear, because that's what everyone wanted to see. Gee, I bet there's no way they could make this any more weird and awkward. Oh wait, I was wrong. 
Oh yeah, this is getting really hot and steamy. I bet they had to wipe off the lens in between takes. As soon as Samurai Cop shows up, Akamura flips up his body to make this just that much more hilarious. And then we have this amazing chase where Akamura grabs a briefcase and is closed because for some reason he has time to change. It's either that or the film crew just didn't want a half-naked Japanese man running around the streets of Los Angeles. I'm not a betting man, but I would put a considerable amount of money on the latter. And I mean, wow, is this a criminal hideout or a college student residence? I also love this cut here, which is the exact same location with just a tighter shot on the doorway where this nicely dressed criminal just magically appears. And the best part about it is that he takes a shot at Samurai Cop, but his gun isn't even loaded. I mean, all you were doing before was just sitting around with guns anyways. You could have at least taken the time to make sure they had bullets in them. So Akamura escapes the house with the briefcase. Obviously there's something important inside that briefcase. Maybe incriminating documents, maybe money, drugs. Good thing there's this perfectly level tree stump here so that he can open it and take out a gun. I'm serious, that's it. That's all that's in the briefcase. In fact, we never see the briefcase in this scene again. In the whole movie, actually. And to make this even more hysterical, the gun only had two bullets in it. You know, I'm starting to think that this is the worst gang of all time. The boss isn't the slightest bit intimidating, and on a few occasions is seen trying to remember his lines. This is America, land of freedom and law. A man is innocent until he's proven guilty. The gang members can't really fight. They don't move out of the way of imminent gunfire. And they can't even run without hurting themselves. And it seems there's not even enough ammunition around to fully load their guns. Hey, here's an idea. How about you take some of that drug money and invest a bit of it into bullets? Maybe some Kevlar as well. That way, when the cops eventually come to try and arrest you, you can, you know, try and defend yourselves and not die. The following fight scene is horribly edited, as you might expect, and was obviously shot on multiple days, on multiple times during those days. But you should really pay attention to the end of this scene, because I'm willing to bet that you will never see someone look that cool while wearing that much denim ever again. In this next scene, you can clearly see the shadow of the boom here, but that's easily the least of this movie's worries. And then it just cuts to this. Who could shoot this in a mafia boss's house? One of his own men. What? What is this? Seriously, what's going on here? What, what does this have to do with anything? Somehow the bad guys know he's at this location, so they send another gang of idiots to come and get him. And do I even have to say anything anymore I'll tell you what how about you guys take a guess at what you think is going to be wrong with this scene do you think it will be acting sound editing dubbing film editing cinematography or camera work take a minute and I'll even give you a hint it's all of it seriously like many other sequences in this movie you can go through this entire checklist and at the end of the scene, he just shoots this guy, and the other guy takes off, and then it just cuts to this. I mean, of course it does. I wouldn't expect anything else at this point. So after that whole murder fest just happened, you think Samurai would be maybe back at the police station, just doing some actual police work on what just happened, who were the men who just tried to kill him, stuff like that. But no, instead he gets dressed in his Sunday best and waits for Jennifer to leave church because obviously this should be his main priority right now. Yeah, laying pipe should be on the top of the list for this guy. So he tells her he wants to ask her some questions in his car, but then takes her to his beachfront property instead. Wow, you know, it must be nice making that kind of money doing what? Shooting people, banging co-workers, Cracking jokes, uttering threats, just overall not doing any real police work. Seriously, where do I sign up for that? Didn't see that in the description for police foundations in college. 
Hey, maybe you should be figuring out a plan of how to take this gang down instead of just hoping they'll eventually run out of guys to send after you. But wait, I'm sorry. That would be edging this movie dangerously close to having some sort of a plot. This chicken, I have a neighbor next door and she has farm animals. And what I did was I jumped the fence and I stole one of her chickens and then killed it. Great. Because I really wanted to impress you. Yes, that's exactly what every girl wants to hear on a first date. My neighbor has animals, so I jumped over the fence and then I stole one of those animals and then I killed it and then I cooked it and here it is. So they decide to go for a walk on the beach. Good thing she just happened to have her bikini with her, but then again, I bet she always brings that to church. By the way, if you don't want to flare out your frame like this, you can either not shoot towards the sun or just try using a mat box. So now the plan is to kill Samurai Cop, but first they have to find out where he lives. Really? They had a guy spying on Jennifer when she was at church. That's how they knew she was with him in the first place. You mean to tell me this guy didn't just, you know, follow him? Seriously. Worst gang ever. So they show up at the one cop's house. How? How do they know where he lives? Where did they get this information? And this guy, well, this guy is just really, really into this gun. I mean, wow, that, that is some heavy stroking. It's almost kind of perverse. I actually feel a little uncomfortable watching this. So then they go to Frank's house again. How do they know where he lives? And if they already knew where he lived, why didn't they just go there in the first place? I mean, that's his partner. He, it seems to me he would be more likely to know his address than any of the others. Anyways, they threaten Frank. Hey, take it easy, man. Come on, talk to me. What, what do you want? I can you kill you now, or I can relieve you of this gift, this black gift. Wow, was that, that, that was necessary. Uh, it was it was really important that you clear that up because yeah i'm sure a lot of us were sitting here watching it going gee i wonder what color maybe it's orange some kind of a lime green maybe oh it's black oh oh well that that makes sense now that i think about it so frank kills those guys frank tries to warn samurai cop but he's busy Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. You thought of everything. Well, you can't have a birthday without a cake. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course, you can probably guess where this is all leading. I really don't know why, but bad movie directors seem to think that showing people lying around kissing is hot. It's not. Quite frankly, I think it's pretty boring and kind of gross. Anyways, they attack them at the house and after a shootout, Samurai Cop and Jennifer get away and then he just drops her off at the restaurant. Yes, that's a great idea. Let's just drop her off at the place where the bad guys hang out and also know where she's most likely to be. And what's amazing here is she just comes in and starts talking to her mom as if everything's fine, telling her she's in love, you know, as if she wasn't just inches away from getting her head blown off a few minutes ago. And guess what? The boss shows up and kidnaps her. Wow, I'm shocked. I mean, I, I can't believe I predicted that. I should buy a lottery ticket. So Frank and Samurai Cop go and ambush the boss's house. Not sure how they know where he lives, but I really don't care anymore. Like I said before, I really don't think the casting for this movie could have gone any worse. I mean, this guy had no lines at all. He just had to act like he got shot, and this is what we get. Inside the house, there's even more bad guys and more terrible casting. Doesn't this guy just paint the perfect picture of a hardcore gang member? So we finally have this scene where they face off with Fujiyama. And I have to say, I think the thing that disappoints me the most about this scene isn't the constantly changing cinematography or the terrible framing. None of that stuff surprises me anymore. I'm pretty much expecting it at this point. But what really disappoints me is that I have been waiting the entire movie 
to see that guy's severed head on top of that piano. And of course, we don't get it. Hey, come on, it's lunchtime. Yes, because we all know crime always takes a break around noon. So then we get this fight between Samurai Cop and Yamashita, and it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to be. A lot of the shots are undercranked to make it look like it's happening faster than it really is. And once again, it's obvious it was shot on different days at different times during those days. Anyways, the fight ends when Yamashita decides that he lost, so he kills himself, and that's it. The movie just ends with Samurai Cop and Jennifer on the beach making out. That's your movie, guys. And we also get this closing credits music that... You know, the first time I heard it, I thought to myself, it's actually not that bad of a beat. I mean, you know, maybe... Maybe someone could actually rap over it. Maybe if you... Maybe, maybe if you sped up the tempo a little bit, if someone was so inclined, they could write a, I don't know, samurai cop rap and put it all together and it might turn out, you know, kind of funny. That could happen. Maybe. He probably cut his hair between then and doing this reshoot. That's the, I, I, who cares? I don't know why I'm still talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry guys. Talking about it. There. You f***ing happy now? I, I, I've, 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 I've committed to the, the stereotype. All right, I have maple syrup in the cupboard. You want me to drink that too?